He's tip tapping away. Hafu is hammer tapping confirmed. Oh no, it's a Hel conspiracy. <laughs> Hello everyone, it's Harry Osish. And I'm Katatsui 101. And welcome back to Let's Play Man Nui Online. Uh, so today we're actually going down this path to Onuahi. Nice. Ooh. Which is right down here actually, it's in the tunnels. So that says Onupo Koro. Oh. Because it's the tunnel between Onukoro and Pokoro, and that says Taxi Crabs. Is that who I think it is? Oh, that's who you think it is. But Yay. first, we got to talk to this character, whose name is Mynak. Oh, he hopped. Howdy, traveler. Need a crab to Onukoro? It's awful dark down there, but Puku knows the way. Puku! I heard there's another Usul race coming up. Make sure you catch it if you're in town. I think, is he, wait, I think you pronounced that Usul. I actually don't know. Does he have like a, like a straw in his mouth yeah. or something? Well, he lives up here on the surface, so. He's a cowboy. <laughs> so who is Puku? Puku's a retired racing crab, used to belong to none other than Onepu himself. Mm. Took the title three times with him. She's a bit long in the tooth now, but still fast. Aww. So, uh, what race? The Usul crabs are strong and loyal. They help us with many things here, from mining to transportation, but mostly racing. I'm usually at the track, but with all the problems these days, there isn't much time for it. Mm. And then, what is Onukoro? Onukoro is the great undercity of Onuwahi. Uh, Wahi just means, like, region. Oh, okay. So, like, for instance, Powahi wondering. is, like, the desert region and stuff. Yeah. Where the mines sink down as, as deep as Mount Ihu is tall. The wise Wanua rules here. So, Onukoro is the underground village. Mm -hmm. So, bye now. We can go to the tunnel on foot, but uh, I'd rather take the crab. What do you think? Let's take Puku. Puku is adorable. Ride the crab. She is best crab. Best crab. <laughs> Man, she is fast. I know. She's a, she, she used to be the racing champion. Yeah. For the crab races. Here we are. <laughs> nice. Underground village. Purple. Again, I just love all the different aesthetics we get here. You know? Yeah. It's kind of like creepy down here, but like, I like it. It's kind of cool though, too, because like, you know, that this is like just some big underground uh, like village, you know? Yeah. He salutes us. <laughs> he doesn't speak. <laughs> Let's go into this first house here. That says, uh, Usul Wax. <laughs> they get waxed. Yeah. Is that well, he's Puku just, like, creeping? No, that's a different crab. Oh, okay. These are, these are Onepu's crabs. Mm. There's one sleeping, see? <laughs> With, like, the, little, the Japanese. Like, like, the anime bubble. <laughs> yeah. Let's talk to Onepu. You there, fetch those saddles, and we need more discs. Step to it. Uh, uh. Try to stay out of the way, traveler. We're organizing a patrol. With all the lights out, Onukoro, the Rahi have stepped up their raids. So this is, uh, people usually call him Purple Jala. You don't know, he's just in charge of the military down mm -hmm. here. Yeah. Um, Take care when traveling the deep mines and tunnels. The Kofu Jaga can appear at any time. Battling them takes a special skill. So he's telling you about how to fight Kofu Jaga, which are fire scorpions. Mm. That was going to be a big mechanic here, was that you were going to fight fire scorpions while doing a minigame called, like, The Search for Onua, where you're looking for the Earth Toa. They end up completely scrapping this minigame, so, like, pretty much everything he has to say about them isn't relevant. But we'll oh, just page through it anyway. Why not? So are you? He's like, I'm Onepu at your service. I am the captain of the famous Onu Koronan Usulri Regiment, champion oh. of the Usul Racing and special aid of Wanua, a great Toak Turaga. God, that's quite a title there, Onepu. He's a little full of himself, too. <laughs> there, were, there were, like, a series of animations that kind of acted like a sequel to this game. Mm. Um, and there was actually a sequel to this game that took place after the animations, and he, there's a great line. He's like, like, I am Onepu, captain of the famous Onu Koronan Usulri Regiment, champion of Usul Racing, special aid of Wanua, a great Turaga, at your service. Oh, and uh, Tepu's here, too. <laughs> oh, no! <laughs> we'll meet Tepu later. The chapter, yes. actually. So, uh, what are the Kofu Jaga? He's just talking about how they're fire scorpions. I'm not really going to read through this, because this is referring to gameplay yeah. mechanics. how they got cut. Never going to need to know that. But they're on screen if you want to read it for yourself, because this could be some interesting stuff. Yeah, I'm sure he it's is, written nice. He's talking here about uh, Protodermis, which is something that they mine here. Mm -hmm. Protodermis is uh, basically ether from Xenoblade. Right. It's this fictional substance that creates a lot of their world, has special unique properties, some of it's downright magical in nature. Mm -hmm. So um, it's basically just ether. Or rather, oh, ether's sure. Protodermis because Xenoblade is bionicle for adults. <laughs> right. And then, uh, yep, darkness gives Makuta's minion strength. If you have a good lightstone, you... so, so you're supposed Me to do? actually reuse this lightstone here in that minigame too. Yeah. But sadly never got used, so goodbye. Darn. May your crab right, swift and true. I love Aww. how there's like a crab running on his wax. That's great. <laughs> so many cute touches in this game. I know. <laughs> so uh, let's go across here. Yeah. I love it in here. I love all the oh, candles. It's such a cool atmosphere. Yeah. So we're going to go in both there and there's something over on that side we're going to go to later. Mm -hmm. But first things first, there's actually a little shrine for Onua. Oh, nice. Let's go to see Onua. Oh, looks like he's actually kind of in the middle of a meeting oh, right now. He's having a board meeting right now. <laughs> I know. So uh, these are different conversations we can go through with him. Turaga Wanua, I will not tolerate this kind of delay. The trade guilds have contracts with four of the of Procor's most influential artists. I understand that. I'm doing everything I can. 
Protodermis production is stopped, stonemasons are slowed by the darkness, and half the shipments were lost to Rahi attacks. Takron and torches are being used to light the stone quarries now. Those deliveries will be made. The Kofojaga are not afraid of torchlight, and what of the Protodermis? The Pom... The... the Coronans. Po the po Coronans cannot s trade stone for nothing. The mine captains are working to break through this rock layer. Until then, there is little we can do. They make goods from the Protodermis. Without it, they cannot trade for stone. We will lose that market. There are other markets. And what of the Lake Horo Highway? It was to be finished months ago. My caravans refuse to travel in the south until it's complete. The Lake Horonans will have to come at our mark will have to come trade at our market until it's finished. Then try, Turaga, but they can no but they can no more come north than we can go south. Perhaps the sea is a better route. There are even more dangerous Rahi in the waters than on land. What of Onua? Is he doing nothing to help Onukoro? Onua did not descend from the heavens to help your prophets, Guildmaster. <laughs> Favorite fucking line. He is in pursuit of a great quest that may yet save us all. I demand that more attention be paid to the needs of the trade guilds. The great market is Onukoro's most valuable asset. Guildmaster, I will speak with Onepu. Perhaps he can spare an escort for your caravans until the highway is complete. Okay, that's just looping again. I think yeah. they all are different. He's just like... When it was just like, like three different people yelling at him at once. Oh my god. <laughs> Poor guy. Without a fresh supply of lightstones, we cannot light the digging site. Have you been able to continue the tunneling at all? Yes, but we are working at about 25% capacity. It's too dark down there to work safely. The Lake Horror Highway must be completed soon. We need, to safe, we need safe passage between the villages. Taraga, we cannot ask our workers to continue under these conditions. Tepu says he can dig by torchlight without difficulty. Tepu is very stubborn and strong, but he is slow when he has a team of diggers to help him. One Tahanga cannot dig a tunnel to Lake Koro. Foreman, until we can repair the flood damage, there's little I can do. You can give us more Tahanga and more equipment. The guilds and the traders have extra. We can use those. They do not have extra. And how would it help if they did? The air is bad because of the torches, and the Rahi attack frequently because of the darkness. If we had more workers, we could alternate teams before they get ill. We could put more guards on duty. Foreman, I understand the problems you are facing. I am doing everything in my power to help, to get you the help you need, but you must be patient. What? Uh, and I think that's just looping again. And then... Taraga, the mining guilds have hit an underground rock layer that they cannot break through. We fear the protodermis will run out if we, can't, if we cannot continue our digging. How far does it run? Shaft 3 and Shaft 8 have ceased protodermis mining because they cannot break through this rock layer. That's the entire mining area. Yes, Taraga. For all we know, the strata extends be beneath all of Matanui, except perhaps the Mongai volcano. Are you certain there is no soft spot to dig through, Captain? We've been over every inch of the surface. There are no fractures, no fault lines, nothing. This is actually referencing what becomes my favorite plot line in this game right now. Yeah. How much remains of the surface deposits? They are running out. We may have to look elsewhere for more protodermis, like like Tawahi or Powahi. What is this layer made out of? Our prospectors believe it to be rock, but it has higher organic levels than any mineral composite we've seen. Organic? Yes, it seems to have more in common with an ussel crab shell than any normal stone strata. Strange. I wonder what we will find if we break through. Taraga, I must have more men and more machines if we are to know. You must allocate more resources to the mining guilds. Captain, I am doing everything I can. No one wants to see the protodermis run out, but Onokoro has many problems right now, as you can clearly see. <laughs> so, basically, Wanua is just here and has three different guys yelling at him for three different problems that he doesn't know how to solve at mm -hmm, once. Poor guy. And this is actually all stuff you have to do in this game. So there's three major things going on. First thing is that they've had a mineshaft flood and they need to get down there in order to get more lightstones. Getting more lightstones then help them finish the tunnel they're making to Lake Horror, which is the jungle village. Mm -hmm. So that tunnel has completely stopped, too. Hello. <laughs> Additionally, down here in the mine, there is a massive shaft they've gotten into that they can't... There, there's like a layer of rock they found at the bottom of one of the shafts. They can't break through it. Right. Said rock is very interesting. We'll get to there shortly. <laughs> but they can't dig any deeper there for some reason. They're not sure why. And as you said, it seems to almost be like organic. Like yeah. It seems like a normal rock. So let's go down here a bit, shall we? Through the mine shaft. Yeah, so that way is to Takoro. That actually goes out to the fire village, the little tunnel we saw that I said led to the underground village. Oh, uh, cool. This way is going to lead to the jungle village mm -hmm. um, once it gets completed. Right. Unfortunately, at the moment, it is not completed, and they're all protesting. Oh my god, they're on strike. Yeah, they're all on strike. Uh, <laughs> what did they you say? You can't dig what you can't see, 
and he is going, no. Oh my God, I can't. Well, still, man. I can't read what he says. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> and look, they have like, I kind of like, you see like all their mining equipment and everything. Yeah. And there's a sleeping crab there, see? Yeah. They're on strike because they don't have enough light. They can't see. Someone's working back there. One character is working. <laughs> this is Teipu. Teipu! He's my favorite. <laughs> Teipu is best boy. Yes. It's hard to dig when there's no light, but Unepu says I have to try. Someday we will reach Lake Koro. Teipu is so, <laughs> so great. He is determined <laughs> to dig this tunnel himself if he has to. He's the best. If the Rahi attack the Sight Traveler, stay near me. I'll protect you. Why on earth so are you sweet. digging? <laughs> we are building a highway to the village of Lake Oro. Wanua says I am the strongest of the Onu Korona. Ko I can't say that. Tahanga, so I'm leading the way. And <laughs> what is Lake Oro? It is a village in the south where the Lake Korona and Tahanga live in trees. I've never been there. Onepu says there are tall, pretty forests and huts built in the sky. Onepu says the Lake Koronans are great musicians, too, and play music all day long from the treetops. Okay, so who is Onepu besides Purple Jala? <laughs> Onepu is my best friend in all of Onukoro. He's very smart and knows a lot about usle crab racing and fighting Rahi. He's supposed to be digging, too, but he showed me that how I can do both our digging at the same time. That's how smart he is. So in case it wasn't clear, Teipu is dumb muscle. He is very sweet, very faithful. He is an idiot. <laughs> um, so he he genuinely believes that he can dig this tunnel single-handedly, even though everyone else is on strike. Goodbye. Bye. <laughs> Teipu is so, he's so great. He's so pure. <sighs> <sighs> Every goddamn character in this game is so charming. I know. <laughs> All, right. All right. What can we do? Um... First thing I actually want to do is I want to go back to the main village so we can go see that uh, rock layer they couldn't get through because that is my favorite plot in this game. Yeah. And that is through here. Great mine. Ooh. And they're they're talking them. how they yeah. now they're just trying to talking to each other how they can't get through the uh, the rock layer. Yeah. I just love all like the scenery in here. I know, just like the the sounds that you're hearing right now. I know. It's look, just, like so mood setting. <laughs> oh shit! <laughs> oh my god! I love how the crabs are asleep. No, someone's working here. See? Yeah, there's someone up there. Yeah, there is. Um, I don't think he actually has a name. Oh. And you can see how cool, like, big the mine is. You know? Yeah. It's kind oh. of like scary how big it is. I know. I wouldn't want to stand up there. Have you brought word from Wanua? Has he figured out how to get through this rock layer? Take care when traveling the deep mines and tunnels. The Kofu Jagas can appear at any time. <laughs> yeah. Battling them takes special skill. They do not appear at any time at all, actually, <laughs> as a matter of fact. <sighs> Who are you? I'm the Chief Prospector. My name is Chief Prospector. <laughs> Remind Shaft Tate. We dig for Pro Dermis and Stone here. So, uh, what word from Wanua? The mining captain has been trying to get Wanua to give us more workers and machines. If we don't find a way through this rock, there won't be any more Proto Dermis. Uh, what rock layer? At the bottom, Shaft B. The elevator goes down there. Onokoro has had real problems since we hit the strata. We can't dig through it or blast it. Not even Onua could claw through it. It's just too strong. Onua's the Earth Tower. Yeah. All right, so goodbye. We got Farahi in the tunnels. It's dark down there. Luckily, there's no Rahi in the tunnels. <laughs> so let's head down and see what's about, shall we? Yeah. Ooh, we get to use an elevator. Yep. Awesome. This is when the plot gets super cryptic and foreshadowy. Yeah. This is, like, probably my favorite chapter. Oh, this one's really cool. And not just because Tapu's here. <laughs> so as you see, there's like this layer here. And look, that's all the drill could do before it got destroyed. Wow. They can't get through this rock. It's just like little scratches on it. And like they said, it doesn't seem to be just here. It seems to spread throughout like everywhere they found. When they get to a certain point digging down, they hit this layer and they can't get through it. And it seems wow. to be oddly organic. And uh, we'll see a lot about it soon. Mm -hmm. All I'll tell you is said layer here is foreshadowing to a massive goddamn plot to us that happened eight fucking years into the franchise. <laughs> oh my god. I think it happened something like 25 books in. Damn. Yeah. <gasps> Who are you? <laughs> that strange disc on the ground is the only feature this rock layer has. I'm not sure what it is. They look like astrological symbols. If I knew an astrologer, I'd sure have a few questions for him. Hey, do you know of any astrologers by any chance? Well, before I tell you that, I want to know who the hell you are. <laughs> I'm a prospector for the mining guild. We're trying to figure out how to get through this rock layer and mine more protodermis and stone. So what's the strange disc you're talking about? Yes, the one on the ground over there. It's covered with strange symbols. We have no idea how it came to be here, buried so far underground, and sunk into this hard rock. It's very mysterious. 
Well, lucky for you, I know an astrologer. <laughs> you do? Great! Take this message and deliver it. I've sketched out this disc. Maybe your friend can figure out if it means anything important. All right, goodbye. Uh, 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 goodbye. <laughs> so, from what they found, this is the only feature on the rock layer. Hmm. This strange disc with these symbols on it. Mm hmm. Very interesting. See all the broken Look, tools? Yeah, around? I was going to say that one tool down there is broken. So, uh, shall we actually head back up to see where the astrologer is? Yeah. Way back in Gakoro. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he said him, but we know it's a woman. We know it's Nixie. Yeah. Actually, on the way back, let's go solve the other problem, because um, that was in the um, other mine. Yeah. We can do that there. It's okay if we solve them a little out of order. Yeah. Because we're not going to advance the plot until we've done everything. <laughs> we can juggle it all at once. I do think this is the longest chapter in the game. Yeah. Yeah, so let's, uh... Look, see, they're, they're selling stuff here. Oh, cool. But it's really dark. See? <gasps> Can't even see them. Torches! Don't be left in the dark! <laughs> Talk her own handmaid! <laughs> Fresh fish, import from Gakoro, get your fresh fish here. <laughs> Statuettes, souvenirs, excellent Italian craftsmanship. <laughs> oh my god. Alright. What do we got? Alright, let's let's all head on over to uh the uh mysterious flooded tunnel. I need Puku. Yeah, Too we need lazy Puku. to walk through these Go tunnels. Go faster with Puku. <laughs> I think it's right here. Oh, I didn't even notice that was a door. Yep. <laughs> See, look, it's flooded uh, with lava. Underneath the volcano here, it's flooded in with lava because one of the pump machines broke. And it's on the other end there, too. Hmm. So they can't get across. Yeah. Better steer clear of this area, traveler. There's a runaway lava that. There's a runaway lava flow that bursts from Takoro. No way to get through the lightstone mines until it's rerouted. Uh oh. We lost a bunch of drilling equipment when that flow burst. It's all stuck on the other side of the fire lake. If only we could get across. Hey. Mm. What do we have? Oh my god, surfboard! <laughs> it loaded twice. Yo, here we go. Who pushed? Who pushed us? I think we just pushed off the edge there. Oh. <laughs> so this is the pump machine. Nice. Oh god, it's one of these it's puzzles. It's a logic puzzle. Oh, I will be no help if I'm you... pretty good at these. <laughs> Whenever I see one of these in Zelda, I'm just like, forget it. I need a guide. <laughs> fucking hate these things. I'm having a bad run today. <laughs> I'm having a really bad run today. Yeah, sometimes you can just like re leave and come back and get like a better setup. Yeah. I think this is really similar setup to what we had actually. Jeez. There's a really easy one to do in Battle for Bikini Bottom. Yeah, I remember that. Mm -hmm. In the Mermelair. Yeah. Reset it again. Oh, I think I got this. We're good. Nice. There we go. There we go. And the lava flow stops. Awesome. And uh, wouldn't you know it, it's cooled like instantly. Oh, geez. Thank goodness. Yeah, right? <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, it might be a few more days before we could progress the game. Like, <laughs> Hail so, Hitler! <laughs> oh my god. Well, that's one of your problems solved. Yep. Let's see if they can get back into the mine again. Collect the light stones. Good. Good uh, for them. I don't think we can actually talk to them. We just kind of see uh -huh. it. They're hard at work. The light stone deposits in this cave will keep Anukor lit for a long time. Pretty sure they'll keep the Rahi back, too. <laughs> <laughs> just shine his on head. them. Alright, now I'm just going to show the exit. How you can, like, leave to Takor, the fire village. Yeah. Because I haven't shown that yet. Mm-hmm. See? Oh, cool. Oh, look. That's nice. There's the dancers from the back. Uh -huh. Oh my god, right. we can join them. We're gonna go ahead till we meet the astrologer. See you there. All right. All right. Here we are. Ready to talk to the astrologer? Oh, it's you again. <sighs> and I was just darn to actually think again. <laughs> All right, let's show her this uh, letter, shall we? Yeah. Strange. A prospector found this in Onukoro underground. She has to specify it's underground just in case you forgot. <laughs> Who would build a sundial underground? Perhaps there was an earthquake and it fell beneath the earth. 
Yes, this is an ancient sundial used you many ages ago. You would have known that if you weren't an idiot. Maybe if you went to school. I am certain that its purpose has been completely forgotten. The strange thing about it is that it has an indicator at four o'clock. No other sundials have this marking. I've seen every sundial in the world. Not a single other one has this marking. <laughs> I've always been curious as to why. Wait, always? Since we gave you this letter like 10 seconds ago? Yeah, don't question me. Take this... Nomen? Take this gnomon and see if it fits in the center of the sundial. You see, I found it in the foothills of Mount Ihu a long time ago, and since then have been looking for the sundial to which it belongs. You may have found it for me. If it is in a cave, then we may not find out what happens every day at four, unless you have some way to fake sunlight underground. Good right. luck. So very interesting. There's a sundial underground, which really doesn't make sense for a sundial be underground. Yeah. And she thinks she may have had the centerpiece around what she found in the snowy mountains. Nowhere near the underground. Weird. Yeah, something's happening. Something fishy's <laughs> going on, you know? Yeah. I'll meet you back there at the village. Look. Oh my god, wait. He's is trying he... to work now that they have light again. Mm-hmm. Aw. Looks like he's overworking that crab. He is a little. <laughs> he's falling. He's like, oh no. Oh no. <laughs> Also, you might see all the lights are on now in the mines. Yeah. So the mines are working again. People are going down. Oh, look, there's somebody all the way back there. There's a whole bunch of people all the way out there, see? Oh, wow. At least Tapu's not the only one doing shit now. Yeah, well, everyone's working now, thankfully. <laughs> so shall we head on down? Yeah. Now that we have the uh, gnomon? Yeah, let's do it. So it's a sundial after all. Very odd. Who would put a sundial underground? Well, the astrologer said something's supposed to happen at four o'clock each day. Maybe if you can fake sunlight somehow, we could find out what. We can't dig it. We can't drill it. We can't blow it up. How do we get through? <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> I'm done talking to you. So let's put the centerpiece in, shall we? All right. And let's fake some sunlight. Yeah. To four o'clock. This is so cool. Ooh. <laughs> He's just like, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> Looks like we had the right idea, stranger. That disc was a passage through the rock after all. Shall we go down? It looks very spooky, but I let's love do how it. ominous this is. I know. <laughs> this all is down here. You can't touch that. This is all that's here right now. Can so, you? I have a little bit of trivia for you. In 2001, LEGO ran a contest where you had to find four golden masks with words above them mm -hmm. anywhere. The first one, for instance, was in one of the comics. You had to find all four of these masks with words above them, translate the words, send it to LEGO, as long with where you found each one. Mm -hmm. And you were entered in a chance to win a solid gold mask. One of 30. <laughs> very, very expensive to get. Not even the rarest parts. There's a solid platinum mask, which is one of a kind. Mm -hmm. um, there's also solid silver pieces and a bunch of other precious metals. <laughs> this is one of those four words that says Rahi on top. So the word Rahi up there isn't important at all. Mm -hmm. However, the gold mask being here is again relevant. Mm -hmm. It's right here in this underground chamber. Wow. Is that so cool? So cool. And that's all we can do here for now, though. So we'll, uh... He's looking at you. He's like, like uh, I don't know about this. <laughs> I don't know if I want to go in there. <laughs> Well, that all the way, we've actually solved all the problems here. Yeah. Chapter's good. pretty much done. Good. Then we've <laughs> definitely helped with Turaga here. <laughs> yeah. Finally, those guys can stop harassing him. Mm. Let's go talk to him, shall we? Yeah. He's still working that crab. <laughs> He's like, oh, finally, some peace, peace and, and quiet. <laughs> Hello. Thank you, adventurer, for helping with so many of Onokora's problems. I thought the Guildmasters would never leave me alone. <laughs> now that I have some peace, is there anything you want, like, to ask for me? Who are you? <laughs> I am Wanua, Turaga of Onukoro. It is my job to keep things running smoothly around here. A hard task in these difficult times. I remember kind of reading, like, Squilliam. <laughs> so what is Onukoro? I mean, we've already kind of figured that out here, but... Yeah. Onukoro is the wondrous undercity of Matanui. Tohonga come from near and far to trade at our great market and marvel at the work of our engineers. Stone dug from our quarries fuels the creations of the Pokoro Coronian Carvers. Protodermis, the stuff of life, 
is brought from deposits within the earth and traded amongst the Turaga. We also mine light stones and many other precious resources. Who is Onua? Yeah, we haven't actually seen him in this chapter. It's the first chapter we don't see a Toa. Yeah. Onua is the Toa of our village. He is a great hero, engaged on a quest to find the masks of power, which he will need to defeat the Makuta. He was actually my favorite Toa as a kid. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, goodbye. Oh, Good well, luck right. in your travels, adventures. May Onua protect you. He just wants some <laughs> peace and quiet. Yeah, I think he wants a nap now. He's like, I ain't feeling too talkative right now. Well, you could just go on with your adventure. <laughs> so now that uh, everyone's working, shall we go see the progress on the uh, highways going? Yeah, let's take a look. Takes so long. Look at that. Nice. That guy's just playing the Game Boy. <laughs> hey, man. Get to work. Get to work, Mr. Squidward. Maybe he's on his 10 minute break. Maybe. See, look, they're all working now, see? Nice. He's Good. Digging. He's working with his crabs, see? Don't leave my boy to do all the work by himself. Shall we talk to Tapu? Yeah, do it. Unapu told me you found a way to the light stones. Thank you, adventurer. We can dig much more quickly now. I'm sure the highway will reach Lake Horo soon. All right, he actually doesn't yeah. say anything else different here, so we just gotta okay. say goodbye, goodbye. trigger the next sequence. Goodbye. <laughs> <gasps> Tapu struck light. <gasps> and there's the jungle. We did it! We've made it through! Onepu was right! It's so beautiful here! Onua said I should make camp when we break through, but I want to go see Lake Koro and see the tree to Hunga. Ah! Let's take him! We gotta take him! Lake Koro is right through these trees, I bet! Won't you take me with you to see it? So, um, this is actually kind of an interesting little quirk. If you say no, it actually changes how the next chapter plays out. Really? And just that Tapu won't be there. Ah. Like, the story's the same, but Tapu won't be there. We have to say yes, though. We have to take Tapu. And he also just sits here and looks sad the whole time. Oh, no. Thank you. I bet it's more beautiful even than the Great Mine. Let's go. See you on the next episode. Bye-bye.